What up, 3 dpn fam? It's your boy, Joel. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and dab on that bell to be notified when cool new stuff is here. I can't do it. I just can't do it. Oh my god, I can't. I can't do it. Hey, it's Joel. I'm here at the $38,000 3D Platform 300 Series Workbench Pro, and we have to do some troubleshooting. And what I have found is that big machines can be troubleshooted the same way small machines can. So let's get right into it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. This episode is sponsored by Brilliant. Head to brilliant.org forward slash 3D Printing Nerd and stick around to the end to find out lots more. Hey, welcome back. The, the reason that I'm in my garage is because we're troubleshooting the big machine. I've had a problem with it and I really wanna show you how I went about troubleshooting it because it's exactly the same way you would troubleshoot something in your garage, in your maker space, in your school, something that isn't $38,000. It's the exact same way and so I really want to get into it. First, though, um, I'm talking into this microphone right here. And the reason I'm doing that is because all the audio stuff is up at the studio and I don't want to get it. So this laptop is running OBS. It's recording me recording this video. Cool. Here's the situation. And I ran into it before. And it happens during prints when the filament runs out. The filament sensor triggers. And then... I'm presented with a message on the screen that tells me to set temperatures, load new filament, and then hit resume. So what do I do? I set the temperature back to the target temperature, and I load some filament, and then I hit resume. And again, and again, and again. And every time I hit that button, nothing happens over and over and over. In fact, the system is frozen at that point, and I have to hit the big red stop button, which kills everything, turns it off. Ah, it is a pain in the butt. So to troubleshoot that, first what we have to do is connect up to the control box. And what I wanna do is get into the Duet interface because this runs a Duet board. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, there are 10. There are 10 screws that hold the top of the control box down. I can undo those pretty quickly with a three millimeter Allen key. Once it's open, I found the problem originally that caused me not to be able to connect. The USB cord was not plugged in to the Duet board. Simple fix, plug it in, and then we're good to go. So that's the first fix, and that's easily applicable to machines, no matter if they're $200 or $38,000. Put everything back together, and I was able to now connect to it with my laptop, and using the Duet uh, Dozuwiki, I think it is, or Dozuki, something like that, I was able to get it an IP address because it's got the Wi-Fi module. And so it was able to connect up to my network. And then I presented with the standard Duet interface. It's a great interface. Duet makes great boards. And so from there, what I wanted to do is find out what was happening when I hit the resume button. So uh, on the Duet board, resume and standby and the end stops that trigger, they're all essentially G code files. So if you take a look inside of resume.g, you can see the steps of G code that it needs to run when that button is pressed on the screen. Looking through this, I see a bunch of different G codes. And so what I do is I attempt to instrument this and I use M117. That just spits a message to the screen. And after each line of G code, I have an M117 with you know a number after it. With the idea being, I, I want to see how many of these spit out to the screen. And during my reading, I found out that M118 is better because then it spits it to the log. And if you use M117, you might not see all messages on the screen because it might go really fast. I didn't really care at this point because I, I didn't mind if I didn't see any of the beginning messages. All I cared about was the last one, the very last one, because that'll tell me where it's stopping in that G code. So after I've instrumented this resume.g file, I saved it off, I started another print, I introduced a filament sensor scenario because I, I snipped the filament, and it presented me with message eight, I think it was. And message eight was just above M116. And you might be asking yourself, what is M116? Well, M116 says, wait for all temperatures to stabilize. So in the land of 3D printing, that means that it's waiting for the bed and it's waiting for the nozzle or nozzles to get within the stabilization range of the target temperature. Well, that got me thinking. So I checked the interface 
And even though the temperature for the nozzle was set at 220 degrees C, it hovered around 225, 226, 224. So it was never achieving that target temperature. And also I noticed that the firmware is from three years ago, three years ago. Uh, it's an older firmware and in newer firmwares, they offer a, a plus or minus on both sides. So if you were to set it to say 220, and it found, and you had plus or minus two degrees, then as long as it was in within the 222 to 218 range, you would be fine. Well, okay, so this is an older firmware. It doesn't have that. It's waiting for the target temperature to be reached. So what I do, instead of just hitting resume, because the temperature is stabilized way too high, is I drop the target temperature by 10 degrees. This lets it drop down below my original target temperature. And then once it's there, I hit resume and I hit plus 10 to bring it back to my original target temperature. So then, so then we're at 217, 218. It starts to go up, go up. It's close enough. It hits the target and the print resumes. The print resumes. So this is great using troubleshooting that's valid for all different 3D printers, whether they're running duet boards or whether they're running Marlin or whatever, being able to step through the commands that are happening, finding the one where it's stopping, and then being able to use that information to investigate that and find out what's going wrong. That is integral to troubleshooting, whether you have an Ender 3 or a $38,000 3D platform machine. A huge thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this episode. Brilliant is a problem-solving website and app for your mobile device that helps you understand the laws that shape our reality through story-driven learning and interactive challenges. I very much remember my math and science teachers in school. I remember their way of teaching was like telling a good story, a story rich in information and concepts that my brain would just gobble up and retain. Brilliant helps me learn in a very similar way. Take, for example, the solar energy course. In it, I've learned about the light from our sun and how almost all of the solar energy reaching the Earth has a wavelength of 300 nanometers to 2.5 micrometers, and it hits the Earth at an intensity of around 1,000 watts per meter squared. If we could capture 100% of that energy and reuse it, we could easily power an Ender 3 3D printer for a few hours. That's incredible, and learning that small fact was a lot of fun. Head over to brilliant.org forward slash 3D Printing Nerd to sign up for free, and the first 200 people who do so with my link get 20% off their annual premium membership. So a few things I've gleaned from this. One, the firmware is three years old. Three years old! I've reached out to 3D Platform, and uh, while two, 2017 was a decent year, I think the updated firmwares could be applicable to this machine. Don, you saw him in the video, he reached out and said they have a beta firmware, they'd be willing to let me test out, and I think I have a great test platform here. I might do that. That's pretty good. Again, 2017, Great year. In fact, the firmware that I have on here is from September of 2017. And if this video is going live when I think it is, it means it's almost its birthday. We had a deal, let the others grow old, not me. So that's the first thing that I gleaned from all of this. The firmware is older and there's functionality that allows for it to handle this slightly more gracefully. The second thing that I learned about this is that the nozzle on the HFE 300, the big 300 watt side, the, the 300 watt heater, this thing right here, for some reason, even though the, the target temperature is 220 C for that print, it's stabilizing at 225 C. That's not good. So A, we're going to get a newer firmware on this machine. We're going to test it out and it should work a little bit better, but B... <laughs> I want to find out more about this. Why is it doing that? Why is it not hovering around the target temperature? Why is it over? I mean, it should be standard usage says that, that the temperature drops below target and it kicks on the heater and it goes above target and it cuts the heater and then it falls below the target and it turns on the heater. And it's just that continual balance right there. For some reason, it's balanced way up there. Okay, so new firmware on this machine. I'm gonna get to test it. And then why is the temperature not stabilizing correctly? Maybe that's a function of the firmware. 
I don't know. But there we go. That was my troubleshooting steps for this machine and the problem that I had. We couldn't connect to the main console. We couldn't connect to the Duet board. And that took opening up the control box and connecting up that USB cable. Simple, easy fix. Most likely it rattled out during shipping. Screws were easy to access. And even though I've got big fingers, I could get in there and plug it back in. That's great. Beyond that, then instrumenting the G code for resume in order to find out the command that was causing everything to not work. And it was that M116. And thankfully, we were able to find that out. And then we mitigated the problem by dropping our target temperature down 10 degrees, letting the temperature settle below, and then going back up to target plus 10, and the print would resume. So there we go. We did some troubleshooting. We know a little bit more about this machine. And uh, as of recording, new glasses on the way. <laughs> thanks for watching. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Uh, a big thanks to everybody that helps out over at Patreon. We'll do a deep dive on Patreon after this. Uh, and uh, shoot. Hug each other more and from a safe distance. High five. Got a dab. Got a dab on that. Let's see if I can do it again. <clears throat> what up, 3DP and fam? It's your boy, Joel. Why don't you dab on that subscribe button and smash that bell to be notified? Can't do it. Can't do it. Sounds terrible.